Welcome, welcome, welcome to yet another episode of Glorious Life on Wheels, where I'm going to teach you how to make basic, simple meals on a butane stove. And you can make these meals no matter what your level of cooking expertise is. Before we get started today, I just want to say a few things. I so appreciate each and every one of you tuning in to my shows because I know there are other things that you could be doing with your time. And in recognition of that, I really want to up my level of expertise at cooking so that I can share that with you. You know, there are really two primary things that you need to have to be a great cook and to come out with great meals. The first thing is you need good ingredients. The fresher, the better but you do need good ingredients. My mom used to say, it's hard to make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. And the same thing goes with cooking. It's hard to come out with a wonderful dish if you don't have great ingredients. The other thing you need is good technique. And what I mean by good technique is little things such as beating the eggs, the egg white till it's fluffy and then folding it into your pancake batter to make that pan, those pancakes fluffier. Those little tips, those little techniques that just enhance the meal. And to that end, I have been really doing a lot of studying on technique. Even though I grew up with fabulous cooks, my mom and her sisters were amazing cooks, I think you can always increase your skill level. And I wanna increase my skill level because I wanna bring even better information and tips to you. So to that end, one of the people that I have been watching among many people that I watch is Gordon Ramsay. I think he is one of the premier chefs on the scene today. And he had a presentation on how to make the perfect scrambled eggs. I mean, I've been making scrambled eggs all my life and probably most of you have too. I'm like, well, What's so difficult about scrambled eggs? But he had some things that I think you'll find interesting and I'm gonna apply them today and share them with you. But before we get to that, I'm starting two new segments on my show. One is a viewer tip segment where I'm gonna share a tip each week that a viewer shares with me because I'll tell you something, I learned so much from you I learn as much from you as you learn from me. And so I want to share some of those fabulous tips. The second thing I'm going to implement is I want to start testing out and bringing to you different recipes that viewers share with me. So I invite you to share your tips and to share your recipes. And maybe once every month or so, I'm going to share, or maybe once every two months, I don't know, we're playing it by ear, I'm going to share a recipe and make it on air that a viewer has sent in. So if you want to be part of this, you can send it in either to my Gmail, which is Glorious Life at Wheel, Glorious Life, excuse me, you think I know my own name of my own show, Glorious Life on Wheels at gmail.com, or you can send it in the comments. So I'd love for you to participate. But the tip of the week this week is from Kathleen K. And when I did my potato salad last week, she submitted a comment that I thought was really a great uh, comment and tip. Now, as you know, those of you who've been watching me, I love to season my potatoes or pasta while I'm cooking it before I put it in the main dish. And I do that often with chicken bouillon. She presented a tip to me that instead of doing that, or maybe along with doing that, that when the potatoes are still warm, once you've cooked them, to drizzle them over with Italian seasoning before adding it to the potato salad and then mixing everything else in. And I thought, wow, that I love seasoning with vinegar and the spices that are in Italian dressing. So she said, use Italian dressing, drizzle it over the potatoes, and that let them soak in, and then add your other ingredients that I shared with you last week. So I am going to try that. I think that's a fabulous tip. That's a thumbs up, Kathleen. Thank you so much. 
And if the rest of you want to be um, included in the viewer tips, just send those tips in and I will pick one each week to use. Meanwhile, let's get started with what we're going to do today. As I shared with you, Gordon Ramsay did a program and he how to how to cook the perfect scrambled egg. So I'm going to share with you some ingredients that are needed for this. Of course, you're going to need eggs. I'm doing three eggs. You're going to need butter, salt, black pepper, some chopped chives, that's your choice, and some cream fresh. This is kind of hard sometimes to find. I actually had to go to three stores to find this. So at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you how you can make your own cream fresh in case you can't find it. And I'm also going to add, I don't have it up here, I'm going to take it out of the refrigerator, but I'm going to add on the top of my eggs at the end, I'm going to add some cheese that I really like. And I'll, I'll share with you what cheese that is at the end. So, oh, also toast that you're going to brown. Since most people who are in vans wouldn't have a toaster, you can just brown your toast um, with butter in a saucepan. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to brown my toast. I'm going to brown my mushrooms. And I've got tomatoes on the vine. He had tomatoes on the vine that he browned in a saucepan with butter. And that was a side dish to his, to his eggs. I would also add, I didn't have any um, today, but I would love to add just some sliced avocado on the side. I think that would really be wonderful with this. But I'm going to get busy off camera, fix up my toast, grill my tomatoes and my mushrooms in butter sauce along with my toast. And then I'll come back and show you how to do these eggs. So don't go away. All right, we're back and I'm gonna show you how to make these perfect scrambled eggs. Or at least that's what Gordon Ramsay said. All right, first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna take and you're gonna crack three eggs into a pot and it's gonna be hot and you gotta do this quickly because you don't want the eggs to cook before you get everything done on them. Then what you're gonna do, and it's gonna be over a high heat you're going to take and you're going to be turning these for about 30 seconds. Then you're going to take, after you get them all cracked, and you're going to be scraping the bottom continuously. Then you're going to take and you're going to remove them from the heat. And you're doing that to let the eggs cool off. Now, usually what I used to do, I would whisk up my eggs, put a little cream on them, and then put them in the pot. But what he says is that you crack them in the pot on high heat, and then you take them off and back, back and forth off the heat to cool them down, heat them up, and that slows the heating process. So we're gonna put these back over here again for about another 30 seconds. And I would have added my seasonings and everything by now, but he suggests, and I found this actually is true, that when you add the salt to different things, that it pulls the water out and it can make them more watery. Who knew? 
but I'm learning and that's what I'm saying. I'm bringing this to you. Now I'm scraping all the bottom out. They don't want it to burn and get overcooked too quickly. And I'm taking it out again. And I'm, I'd like to show you while I'm at it. Multitask, this beautiful, beautiful slice of wood that my cameraman Enoch made for me to have as a hot plate. Isn't that gorgeous? Then you're gonna take that out and quickly you're gonna take and when you're gonna put this back, oops, oh my goodness, I didn't open this. Let me get this opened. And you're gonna, when you put this back on really quickly, you're going to add about a teaspoon of creme fraiche that cools that down. And you're gonna mix that up. I usually do add cream to my eggs, but I have never used creme fraiche before on eggs. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna season your eggs. I take just, at this point, a little pinch or so of salt, and I'm using sea salt. I'm gonna add some pepper some black pepper, and then I'm gonna lift this up, stir it up. I actually would probably, if I was doing it without following his recipe exactly, I'd probably add a little onion powder, and you know how I like garlic, so I probably would, might even consider adding some garlic powder. And then, there we are, adding this to this. These are light, fluffy, perfect. What I'm also going to do at this point, this is not in Gordon Ramsay's recommendation. I am going to add just a little bit of feta cheese on top of this because I love feta cheese with eggs. And then on top of that, I'm gonna add just a just a little smattering of chives. Now, it's really better in this instance to have fresh chives, but since I didn't have fresh chives, I'm gonna add what I have, which is dry chives. Okay, gloves off and I've got the chives now. I'm just gonna add a little sprinkling of chives on top of this. Okay, come on, chives. All right, what's the matter, chives? Okay. <laughs> Anyhow, you get the picture. I'm gonna add some chives on top of this, and there you have it. A quick, simple, inexpensive, but lovely meal with scrambled, perfect scrambled eggs. I'm gonna get to the fun part now which is sampling it. I might add, I think for me, I would if I didn't have any, but I would like some really thick sourdough bread underneath this. I think that tanginess of the sourdough would really bring this together. And if you don't have, like I said, in a few minutes, I'll, I'll tell you how you can make creme fraiche. But also I would say you could probably do cream cheese or maybe even a tad bit of sour cream but anyhow, let's go ahead and sample this and see how it is, shall we? Okay, I've got my napkin ready this time so I can wipe my mouth as I dig in. Mmm, you've got the bread with that's been toasted with butter. You've got the faded cheese, the chives. Mmm. Let's have a bite of this mushroom. Mm. That is good. Mm, mm, mm. I think it could stand to have a little more feta cheese even. 
but I'll add that after I stop shooting. Mm. Mm -hmm. Who knew I was cooking scrambled eggs the wrong way all these years? Go figure. This is absolutely the best scrambled egg I've ever had. I think what I would do, light, fluffy. What I would do though, is when I'm doing the tomatoes, I might slice them in half and grill them that way. And then I also, I think I would add a little bit of garlic powder and onion powder to them as I'm cooking them. But thank you, Gordon Ramsay for teaching me something on technique that I didn't know about scrambled eggs. I'll never make scrambled eggs the same way again. So come on and join me as I explain some exciting things that are coming up in the future. As I said to you earlier, I'm gonna share with you how to make creme fraiche. Some of you are probably wondering what creme fraiche is. It's actually kind of just a, a highfalutin kind of form of sour cream, but it has a higher fat content so it doesn't curdle as much when you cook it, and it's used in France a lot. If you can't find creme fraiche, how you can make your own is if you take a cup of heavy whipping cream, add two tablespoons of cultured buttermilk, not low fat, but cultured buttermilk, mix it together, and then cover it with something that can breathe like cheesecloth, and let it stay out for eight to 24 hours, stir it, and then put it in the refrigerator, and you've got creme fraiche. And uh, although I would say if you can't find the creme fraiche, do a teaspoon of sour cream. You know, you gotta use what you have. But anyhow, I said that I'm going to share with you an exciting thing that's coming up. Beginning in September, I'm hoping, end of September, around that, don't hold me exact, but I am hoping that we'll be at 5,000 subscribers. Do you believe that? Thanks to all of you, I'm almost at 4,000 right now, and I believe that 5,000 is right around the corner. To celebrate when I get to 5,000, I'm going to go live. Hold your hat, because I don't know how this is gonna turn out. I've never done a live show. So you may have me going up and down the camera, going around everything, I don't know. But if I do it on my own, but if Enoch helps me, it, it'll be a success. But we'll see how it goes. But anyhow, that's my plan. When I get to 5,000, to do a live show. And on that live show, I'm going to do a giveaway. And I saw someone who had like a wheel that they used and they had questions and people asked, um, answered a question that I would give. And the first person that answered, their name would go on the wheel. I'm going to do this and probably put about 20 names on the wheel for, um, I don't know, I haven't decided how many gifts, but I know at least one of them will be a super, super special thing that I absolutely love. And the other things will be items that I use and really um, find help me, but I have one that's gonna be a super duper giveaway. So do tune in, keep watching, share, tell everyone so we can get up to 5,000 so I can go live. And who knows, maybe make a fool out of myself live. But anyhow, thank you so much again for your support. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. May your journeys be filled with joy and blessings. I'll see you next Thursday. Bye, friends.